Good day, my dear ones. I'm out here taking a walk on a bright, sunny day. I always have a surprising surge of freedom when I can get out in what is typically the gray, dark cold of Ohio winter for a walk on a bright, sunny day. And that, I think, is a parable for the surprising freedom that we have in Christ. I want to talk about freedom today. Freedom is really important to us as Americans, and rightly so. For example, the freedoms that are encapsulated in the Bill of Rights, we greatly value those. But sometimes I think we be can become so focused on these political freedoms that we miss what is the true and surprising freedom that we have in Jesus. There are many passages in the New Testament that talk about this freedom. For example, in John chapter 8, Jesus is recorded as saying, you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. Maybe you've heard people say the truth will set you free. Well, it comes from this saying of Jesus. Four verses later in chapter 8 verse 36, Jesus says, if the Son sets you free, you'll be free indeed. He's talking about himself, the Son of God. When Jesus sets you free, you are truly free. So let me ask you this question. Do you feel truly free in your life? And if you do, how would you explain the freedom that we have when Jesus sets us free? What does this freedom mean? A passage that helps me to more deeply understand that comes from Paul's second letter to the Corinthians, chapter 3, verse 17, where Paul wrote this, where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Leading up to that statement, Paul is making a reference to an event in the Old Testament when Moses came down from Mount Sinai, having been in the presence of Holy God. And because he had been in the presence of Holy God, he was glowing with the holiness of God, so he had to put a veil over himself. Otherwise, if the rest of the people looked at him, they might get burned up or something. This veil represents the old understanding, what Paul called the old covenant, of our relationship to Holy God. As sinful human beings, we can't be in the presence of Holy God or we'll get judged and, and burned up or something like that. So there's this veil of separation. In fact, we want to maintain that separation and keep the veil, otherwise we'll be judged and maybe judged harshly. Well, there's not freedom there, is there? Well, that all changed in Jesus when God chose to come to be with us, to join us in Christ. And even more deeply, when the Spirit of the Lord, the Holy Spirit came to live in us when we trust in Jesus. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. This is the freedom from never having to think that God is not for us. Never doubting that God is for us. That God has done everything to be with us. Never doubting that God loves us. That's the freedom we have in Christ. That we can't out sin God's love for us. The freedom of knowing that Jesus is a greater Savior than we could ever be a sinner. That's true freedom. It is the freedom from the fear of God's judgment. God will judge because God is holy. But we don't need to fear that judgment any longer because of Jesus. We are free to live however we wish. Now comes the real surprise of the freedom that we have in Christ because when we are truly free, what we most wish, what we most desire is to live more for others than ourselves. When we are truly free, we best experience it when we live more for others, like Jesus lived for us. So you are free indeed, free from the fear of God's judgment. And you'll best experience that freedom as you live for others. Remember this, for God is in you.